Welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. I'm Jim. You can find us at babyboomertales.com. Once you have arrived at our webpage, you can find our YouTube channel, our Boomers General Store, several places where you can access our podcast, and more. Today I am talking about money and some ways I try to save money. We need money just to survive in today's world. That's a fact. The Bible quotes that the love of money is the root of all evil. I want you to pay attention to that. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil, not money itself. Money is just a tool. Not much different than your lawnmower to mow your yard, your car to get from point A to point B, your television to entertain you. And by the way, it takes money to buy all those things. Money's just a tool. So don't get all tripped out thinking that if you like to see your little bank account grow, that you're being evil. You are not. You're trying to take care of you and yours and your loved ones and take care of business. It takes money to do that. Always has, always will. Maybe not old greenbacks, but in some form. Here's something fascinating about money. If you wreck your car, you may have no cars. If you lose your lawnmower, you have zero lawnmowers. But money, you can have negative money. We call it debt. It is really the only thing I can think of offhand that you can be in the red with. If you lose absolutely everything in the world, you have zero. Nothing. But money, you can owe somebody. You can be in the red. So be careful with this. Money can be a good thing to have. And it can be a weight around your neck if you have a negative amount of it. Our interesting fact this week is about money, of course. The penny has E. Pulubrus Unum. Did I say that right? Stamped on it. And God we trust is what it translates to. But the first pennies were designed by Benjamin Franklin, good old Ben. And on it had stamped mind your business. It costs about 1.7 cents a penny to mint a penny. 1.7 cents to mint a one cent penny. Doesn't make much sense to me. Paper money is not paper. It is 75% cotton and 25% linen. And finally, there are 293 ways to make change for a dollar. Ask that fast food person about that, if they can even do it. Now, if you work in the fast food industry, I'm not making fun. I'm basically talking about some 16-year-old kid that doesn't even want to be there. Our song of the week is Money by Pink Floyd. It was on the 1973 album, Dark Side of the Moon. It became Pink Floyd's first hit song, reaching number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 list. It has been described as a progressive blues hard rock song. Band member Roger Waters wrote this song to demonstrate the irony and criticize the power of money and capitalism. Oh, by the way, they made a bundle off of this song. Money, it's a gas. Grab that cash with both hands. How do I try to save some money? First, we use credit cards to pay for everything. Everything. We get points or rewards off of every card that we use. What I like about credit cards are they are more insured and take care of you in case of theft than like your bank debit card. Also on your credit cards, right on the statement every month, you can check your FICO score or your credit score. You can also borrow money at 0% on many credit cards. I do not recommend borrowing money, but if for some reason something happened and you had to borrow money, 
this is a cheaper way to do it unless it's a great amount of money than paying the interest on a credit card to pay a credit card pay off your credit cards every month there's no high interest when you do that there's no interest at all when you pay it off every statement pay off that zero percent interest loan type card before the date is over that it's good till you may have to transfer that money to another zero percent card but be careful of that because the interest on those are higher than the regular credit card but zero percent for a year is a great deal you may have to pay three percent up front but that is nothing that's nothing now if you are older number one you think that you're busier than you are number two you may have a fixed income or number three you don't have that much saved where you may be concerned about your cash flow or even if you have a bundle put away that you were diligent about it and you had a great retirement fund etc every penny counts as you get older every penny counts so I want to talk about how I save a little money here and there because it adds up it adds up big time let's start with the grocery store this is one of my favorite things to do in my golden years here number one I shop the ads I don't shop them by getting a mailer in the mail or something on a newspaper what's a newspaper I look on their websites I basically use one grocery store as my number one go-to store I use a second grocery store if I go up into the city I look at their ads and maybe I can get something at a good price I only buy the necessities and if something's on sale I buy a bunch of it if it's a very good sale I track this stuff like nobody's business I always go to the store with a list now if I did live in the city I would utilize there's basically three major grocery stores in the Kansas City area plus the Walmart two percenters that have grocery stores what I do is I go to a store called Price Chopper here in town or the bigger town that I'm closest to and there is a Walmart also there I do Walmart once a month I just keep a running list and the grocery store what I do before I go to the store on my list I write down how much that product is at Walmart I basically shop the ads at the grocery store and if it's cheaper at Walmart I just put a zero on my list and put it on my Walmart list it's important to buy something if you find a great deal on it like right now peanut butter is four or five dollars if you wait long enough you can find it for a buck fifty so when peanut butter comes along I bought it at a buck fifty keep the rest of my pantry that's just one example also grocery stores have rewards cards and I use mine to get gas I can usually get about 50 cents a gallon off filling up my car by using my rewards card at the grocery store if you save it for several weeks that does add up also a lot of times on their weekly ad if you spend 50 bucks you get an extra 25 cents a gallon off for example so it does add up also my grocery store has what I call freebie Friday if you spend $25 on Friday you get a certain item free this last time was dinner rolls for free sometimes it's ice cream sometimes it's pizza you never know it's usually a pretty good thing though so watch for that by all means use a rewards card at the grocery store I'm always amazed I'm standing behind somebody in the checkout line and they don't have a rewards card and I see a couple items that they could have saved you know maybe a buck because it's on sale if you have the rewards card so grocery shopping is a very big thing for me a big part of our budget every month goes towards food but we basically eat at home we very seldom eat at restaurants food costs money 
Food costs more money today than it did a few years ago. So you have to protect yourself. I can save by doing these few things, plus the rewards, plus the freebies. The local grocery store has local items where Walmart probably doesn't. Last month in March, I spent $282.88 at my local grocery store and saved $160.86 by using my rewards card and shopping sales, etc., etc. That's 36% savings on my groceries at the grocery store, plus I accumulated 41 cents off per gallon on gas that month. Your phone rewards. I want to speak about a phone, number one. If you still have a landline, I would encourage you to get rid of the landline and just use a cell phone. Also, I encourage you to carry your cell phone everywhere you go. If you fell down, something happened to you, if you had that cell phone on you, you can call for help, okay? A landline, really, unless you have a business, it really not necessary. It's not. Get rid of it. It used to be the landlines got the telemarketers and the cell phones didn't. Any more today, the cell phones do too. But there's a setting you can set to screen calls and flag scabs or anything like that that they're calling or only rings if it's on your contact list. There's all kinds of things. Don't let it intimidate you. If you find that it intimidates you, get some kid to help you set everything up and explain to you how to do things. That is my recommendation. Get rid of the landline. Use your cell phone. With my cell phone plan, I get Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, all for free. All for free. I also have AAA insurance for free. Also, I get an extra 10 cents a gallon off on gas every week by using my cell phone. That's part of my plan with the cell phone company. And I utilize those rewards. A lot of people have these things. I was talking to a friend the other day. He had the same company I had and didn't realize all these little rewards. That adds up. It adds up to, you know, 20 bucks a month easily. Easily. Also, utilize apps on that cell phone. If you do go to, like, fast food restaurants and stuff. If you have the app, you're always going to get something free, a taco free or a french fries free or something like that. Also gas. Most gas stations, if you use their app, you get some off per gallon. There's a truck stop that has 10 cents a gallon off just by having their app. Now you have to use the app at the pump, but once you use it once or twice, you're used to it and it's no big deal. I encourage you to use today's technology to save money. Plus, carrying the cell phone with you protects you. Don't eat out too much. I just said how we barely ever eat out. And when we do, it's a treat, but we don't do fast food hardly ever anymore. Once in a while, we do go to a restaurant, but not very often. Whenever I go to a restaurant, I look at the bill and I think, that's groceries for a week, for one meal. Save, save, save money if you can. It's never too late. My grandpa told me to save $5 every time I got paid. $5. He said, that's all you need to save. Now, this was a long time ago when $5 was more. But say you save $5 a week. If I would have done that when I was 10 years old, so that's 64 years at $5 a week, I would have had $18,720. But with the magic of compound interest, if I were to put it somewhere where I got 3% interest, that's not a lot. That's, you know, maybe a bank CD, possibly. If I had done that and collected 3% interest over those 64 years, I'd have had $47,334 today. Just sitting there by putting five bucks a week Five bucks a week, what is that, $260 a year? Not much. Five bucks is a hamburger. Well, actually, I think hamburgers are six or seven. Go to a restaurant, it's ten. Five bucks a week. It's never too late to do that. 
It's never too late to do that. Stop telling yourself it's too late. It's too late for me. I'm too old. I'm set my ways. I don't think I can do that. Remember, we're not as busy as we think we are. We don't have that much to do. We can do things that we've never tried before if we just apply ourselves a little bit. That's all it takes, a little bit of effort on almost everything. Whenever you go somewhere, have a list. Have a list of what you're going to do, what you're going to buy, what your goal is by leaving the house. Make a list of several things before you leave the house. You'll save money on your gas. Utilize places like Sam's Club and Costco. Things like toilet paper, potato chips. Not all food items, but a lot of different food items are cheaper if you go to Costco. Well, I don't need 36 rolls of toilet paper. You did in 2020, didn't you? Yeah. Better to have too much than not have anything. But if you buy food and stuff like in bulk, rotate it. Always eat the oldest first. Always eat the oldest first. Shop the sales no matter what. A lot of times if you just wait a week or two, you can get a much better price. Have a budget. I've talked about this before. Just write down a piece of paper if you have to. How much you make and then what your monthly expenses are. And try to stick to it. Don't be fooled by sales that look good. Figure it out. One example I want to use here, our grocery store is always having Kansas City Strip steaks on sale. What they are are 10 ounce steaks and they're usually $6 for a steak or $8, sometimes $9. Sounds good. $8 for a Kansas City Strip steak. Wow. Well, at $6, that steak actually costs you $9.60 a pound. $9.60 a pound. Usually, if you walk over and find the family pack, when it's $6 for a steak, you can find those same steaks for, say, $7.99 a pound. So $9.60 a pound opposed to $7.99 a pound. Now, I can't afford to eat steak. Well, I'm just using this as an example. Thankfully, I can, or I do, because I enjoy steak, but I only buy it at the $7.99 a pound or cheaper. If you really watch, if you watch like Eagle Eye, you can get it for $5.99 a pound sometimes. You just never know. Just don't take for granted that that's the price it is. I watch people at the grocery store all the time putting stuff in their buggy that I know is a dollar cheaper at the Walmart. Now, I'm not advertising Walmart, not one little bit. What I'm doing is I'm telling you, shop around. Also, your grocery store might have it on sale the next week's for a buck less. You never know. Can I do without something for a week? Well, besides water and toilet paper, yeah, I can do without something for a week. I can. Yeah, that's about it. Always try to be kind. It's good for your soul. Thank you for riding along today. I'll be back next Wednesday. Peace out.